Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is John with Get PC Security, and in this video today, we're going to be walking you through the step-by-step -step process of upgrading an old 3.5-inch hard drive and replacing it with two new SSD drives. Now, one of the SSD drives will be a standard 2.5-inch drive, while the other one will be an NVMe M.2 drive that sits directly on the motherboard. We will be using some software today. We're going to be using a piece of software called Macrium Reflect, which will allow us to clone the existing 3.5 inch hard drive into one of the new SSD drives. And we're going to show you how to use that software as well. But before we go any further, please take a quick second and subscribe to our channel right now and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we post new videos. So don't go anywhere. There's lots to do here as we're about to perform a multiple SSD drive upgrade and show you how to do it all. I'll be right back. So before we open up the PC and begin to do the upgrade here on the drives, let's take a look real quickly at why we're doing this. So again, these are the exact drives that we'll be removing and putting into the PC. So we're going to remove a 3.5 inch drive, a Seagate one terabyte drive, and then we're going to put in a 2.5 inch SSD drive from Samsung and also an NVMe M.2 drive from Western Digital. This is going to be the bootable drive. The 2.5 inch drive will essentially be replacing this 3.5 inch drive. Let's talk about just why real quick, why we're doing this. So there's a number of reasons why you would install and replace your older 3.5 inch drives with SSD drives. Speeds is clearly the number one reason why you would do this. We're going to show you some speeds in a minute, talk about speeds. Also, you know, faster speeds give you better performance, more productivity as well with faster speeds on the SSD drives. Now let's take a look under the hood here on the 3.5 inch drive and the 2.5 inch drive. Look in the 3.5 inch drive. This is a drive that has many moving parts, about six moving parts here. Platters, it has a spindle, has a read write head, and then the actuator components. There's three components there. These are all moving pieces. And then when you write data to the drive or when you retrieve data uh, or, and read data off the drive, it's accessing that. So the actuator is moving, it's creating noise. There is, an, there is a chance for one of these parts and pieces to go down, right? Hard drives do fail. So you're gonna have a, a quieter experience with the SSD drives, which have no moving parts and pieces, and also better reliability as well. Also, the SSDs require less energy to power those drives. So your your PC is going to run at cooler temperatures because it has, you know, it requires less energy to power those SSD drives. On the SSD drive here in the middle, you'll see it's flash memory, right? That's the main component of storage for an SSD drive. And so under the hood here on the SSD drive, there's no moving parts or pieces. Over here on the NVMe M.2 drive, this is just like a chip that's going to sit on the motherboard. But again, under this under this black strip here, there are uh, pieces of flash memory that are on this, uh, this stick here that's going to sit in the motherboard. And let's just show you that real quick. So here's a, a little image of a motherboard. And so you'll see that there's a screw here on the end and a slot right here. And so these, this this NVMe M.2 drive slips right onto the motherboard and goes directly onto the motherboard, which is why you're going to get better, better speeds. So let's talk about speeds real quick here. This slide on the bottom here shows the speeds. And so traditionally, and I'll, I'll show you a test here on the next screen here, but I ran a test using some software and got average speeds of, uh, of 180 and 170. Let me show you that real quickly. So I used a piece of software called Crystal Disk Mark, which is a free download. And just look at this top row here. I ran one test and then another test just to make sure I was getting the same average kind of read write speeds and I and I did about 180 179 we're very close to 180 and then the write speed is 171 169 now I will run these same tests on the SSD drives once they're installed and we're going to show you that result at the end so stay to the end of the video and we're going to show you the two tests we ran on the SSD drives once we installed them as well so let's go back to this but you'll see the SSD drives have considerably faster read write speeds the S the 2.5 inch drive almost 5x here 560 530 for write and look at the performance of the NVMe M.2 drive it's just insane at 20 about 2600 1500 for write this is the i think the main reason why i'm doing it but uh, less moving parts and pieces, definitely faster, faster speeds, better performance, better productivity overall. This is one of the main reasons why we're doing the upgrade here to the SSD drives. 
Okay, one last step here before we open up the PC and begin to work on it. One of the things you want to do, and the, you, you only have to do this when you're replacing or upgrading a 3.5-inch drive, is we want to defrag the drive. Now, this isn't a PC I've used extensively. There's, there's, there's certainly data on it. But what you want to do is when you read and write data to drives, it sometimes in, install and take off applications. It sometimes can put on that platter as it writes to it. It can put data in different areas. And so what you want to do as you as you clone the 3.5 inch drive is organize the data in a better, cleaner fashion on the 3.5 inch drive before you put it over to the SSD drive. So let's do a quick search for defrag and it pops our defrag and optimized drive. Let's click on that. The first thing you wanna do is analyze it real quick. So again, this shouldn't take a lot of time with this drive. We're gonna analyze it real quick and see how long it takes. Shouldn't take very long. After we analyze it, we can then do the defrag on it. And so this should be a pretty quick process here. It's already at 20%, oh, now 30%. Okay, and this is almost done, coming up to 90% here. Again, this isn't a drive that this should take so too long on. All right, so once we've analyzed it, now we wanna optimize it essentially and defrag it. So let's do that now. And this may take a little bit longer. All right, let's let this hard drive defrag and then we'll come back when it's over and show you the results. Okay, so this process is now done. I first analyzed and then defragged my drive and it took about 20, 25 minutes. I was only using, of the one terabyte drive I had in there, the 3.5 inch drive, I was only using about just under about 270 megabytes. So. I wasn't using a whole lot of it. And again, the system's only about a year, year and a half old. So it came back as 0% fragmented, which is what you want. What that 0% means is that there were no chopped files or folders on the disk. So the hard drive should be running smoothly. So I, I'm not surprised about that. I would have been surprised if I had any fragmented files on there. Again, I don't store a whole lot on there. Hadn't had it for a long time. But you definitely want to analyze and defrag your 3.5 inch drive before you do the cloning process and all that. You don't need to do this process on, a th on an SSD drive if you're moving it to a new SSD drive. But I'm not going to get into that. We've analyzed the drive. We've defragged it. We're all good to go now. So let's move on to the next step now and open the PC and to hook up the two new SSD drives so we can begin the cloning process using MacRam Reflect. Okay, so now it's time to open up this PC and start working on it. The PC we're going to be working on today is a Dell Inspiron 5680 desktop. And it's time now to open up the case and start looking at the hard drives, what we have to do to get at the motherboard to install the M.2 drive, and what kind of bays we have where the existing 3.5 inch drive are and the new 2.5 inch SSD and where that's going to go. The one thing I did want to share is I picked this up at a local PC store. I did pick up an installation kit. I didn't know if I was going to need an extra bracket for the SSD drive uh, or some extra data or power cables or screws. So I picked that up as well for $10, uh, which is always good to have around just in case you need some extra parts for an install. So let's open this desktop up and get busy on the install. Okay, now that we've got the cover off, let me point out a couple things before we get close up on this. The three and a half inch drive that's connected, the existing hard drive is right here and it's held in by a bracket. That's gonna eventually come out once we clone it. The two and a half inch drive, SSD drive, that I showed you with the bracket is gonna go right in here. Now the M.2 drive is on the motherboard. In order to get to the motherboard, I've gotta remove this bracket, this video card, and then the M.2 drive on the motherboard is way in here. And so once we have all that removed, we'll be able to install the M.2 drive. And remember, the M.2 drive is gonna be the bootable drive. We're gonna clone this three and a half inch drive to the M.2 drive, and then the two and a half inch SSD drive is gonna be sitting here as the secondary storage drive on this PC. So let's get busy. Let me get my screwdriver and begin to take out these components. Okay, now with the bracket and the video card out of the way, you can clearly see a shot of the motherboard here. So we just need to install that M.2 drive in this slot and with this screw. And so it's gonna go in right there. Okay, now, so we're all set to install the M.2 drive. Now on the Dell motherboard, the screw goes right here. This Dell motherboard, I could not find a, a screw that came with it. So I had to go out and get a package of screws that fit this particular motherboard. So you need to make sure that you have a screw if you don't on your motherboard. And then when you go out and get a screw at the local PC store, uh, or somewhere that you're getting the right type of, of screw. They do make screws for particular kinds of motherboards, whether it's an MSI or a SUS a motherboard. So you need to make sure you're getting the right type of uh, screw for the M.2 drive. 
So let's go ahead and install the M.2 drive. And again, it goes right in that slot there and it just pushes in like a piece of RAM would push in on a motherboard. And this kind of sticks up. So when I screw this down, it's gonna stick flat against the motherboard. Not completely flat, but flat enough. So let's go ahead and screw this down on the motherboard. Get our screw out and our screwdriver. Okay, not too tight, but tight enough. And that is in. So there with a screw in the slot is our Western Digital 500 gigabyte M.2 drive. So that's that. Okay, so the next step here is to get our two and a half inch Samsung SSD drive into the bracket, which is ultimately gonna go right into the second bay here. And then after we clone this drive over to the M.2, the three and a half inch drive is gonna come out completely. And all, the, all that's gonna be in the PC is this SSD drive in the bay and the M.2 drive on the motherboard. So let's go ahead and get this set up here in the bracket and then we can wire it up. Okay, now that we've got the SSD drive in the bracket here, we've loosened these screws on this. So what's gonna happen is that this comes out, our new bracket goes in, the bracket essentially was in there and that holds it in place and then we can hook up the wires to each one of the components like we have on the three and a half inch drive. And that's gonna go in there like that. And eventually again, this one's gonna come out. So let's get that in there now. Okay, so now we've got the SSD 2.5 inch drive in the bracket, powered up through a power cable and a data cable, and it's all hooked up. I'm not gonna close this up and screw it in because eventually the three and a half inch drive is gonna come out after we clone it to the M.2 drive. So let's get the video card back in here, power up the PC, and start using Macrium Reflect to do the cloning so we can finish this up, take out the three and a half inch drive, and then close this all up and get everything screwed back down tightly. Okay, now let's power back up the PC, make sure that the PC recognizes the two new SSD drives we just installed, and then turn on Macrium Reflect software and make sure that all three hard drives are visible and begin the cloning process of the three and a half inch drive over to the M.2 drive sitting on the motherboard. Once that's all done, we've confirmed everything, we can then remove the three and a half inch drive from the PC, clean it up a little bit, put the 2.5 inch drive back in there and close up and we should be close to being finished. We're also gonna run some speed tests on the new SSD drives to see how fast those are compared to the old 3.5 inch drive. Okay, so we booted up the PC and we opened up the Macrium Reflect software and this is what came up as soon as we opened it up. We've got the original 3.5 inch hard drive across the top here and all the boxes and partitions are checked. And then these are the two drives that we added. So we added the Samsung two and a half inch drive that we put into the bay. And then the disc three is the Western Digital M.2 drive on the motherboard. And they're all, they're both about, we have an, a space of about 465 gigabytes in each one. So what we wanna do is just clone the existing one over to the bottom one here, the Western Digital. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move that to, to that drive. So what I did is I selected all the partitions. I hit clone this disc opens up another window. I'm gonna select uh, which one to clone to, and then I'm gonna pick the Western Digital Drive. Now, the existing drive, the 3.5 inch drive is about a, it's a terabyte, so it's larger than the 500 gigabyte M.2 drive we put in here. So, as we bring the partitions over, we're just gonna copy selected partitions. It's gonna give us this insufficient space. So I can add up the bottom number of each one of the partitions, four, five, and six, and I can take this part, this section down here and lessen it. So I'll take, you know, 12.5 or 13 gigs away from 465 to make room for those and bring them down. So let's select the third one down here and we'll click partition properties. And let's say, let's free up 12.5 gigabytes. So we select gigabytes and that's what we're dealing with here. And then we'll, let's free up 12.5 and hit OK. And now we've made 12.5 gigs of room to bring these other ones down. So let's, as we click on these up here and bring them down, we should be able to squeeze them all into 1.06, 1.118, and so we'll bring it down. And there's a little bit left over and that's OK. So 118 megabytes, that's OK. So we're all set now to clone this. We've uh, adjusted the partition, it now fits here. And let's keep moving forward, hit Next. We'll hit next again, and now we'll hit finish, and okay.
Now this might take a little while, so we're going to come back towards the end here. The cloning process has started. Come back at the end when it's finished and we'll kind of record how long it takes here. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so the cloning process is all done. It took about an hour and a half here for the cloning process of the one terabyte drive down to this 500 gigabyte M.2 drive. But it looks like all the partitions did make it over. In the middle here, we have that 500 gigabyte 2.5 SSD drive. I did do a quick initialize and format on that drive so it shows up properly here as drive D. What I want to do next is though, I want to power down the PC. I want to unplug and disconnect the one terabyte drive and see if the system recognizes through the Windows Boot Manager the new M.2 SSD drive that we cloned. So let's power down that and I'll come right back here and we'll show you the results. Okay, so we powered down the PC, disconnected the 3.5 inch hard drive, and then booted it back up, and we see exactly what I was hoping for. Now, I didn't make any changes in the settings to the UEFI settings of the Windows Boot Manager. That's what I have enabled on my Windows 10 PC here, this Dell Inspiron 5680 that we're working on here. So I didn't have to make any changes, but disconnecting the 3.5 inch drive and then booting it back up, I do see the that it booted right to the M.2 drive that we cloned, and then I do see the other Samsung 2.5 inch drive sitting here that we're going to use as our primary storage drive. So I see everything there properly, it booted up really fast. We are going to show you the speed test. We also ran the two new SSD drives in a minute here. I also did just check the file explorer, made sure the drives were showing up here. I also did a quick check on disk management and they were all the same. So it looks like the two drives are certainly reporting properly, all looked correct in the system and uh, we're pretty happy with the cloning process. So let's move over and show you those speed tests real quickly and show you the difference these SSDs make over the traditional three and a half inch drive that we just removed. Okay, so here's that initial speed test we did in the three and a half inch hard drive. And we, again, we did two tests on each drive just, just to see we were getting similar results here. So we've got read results of about 180 and write results of about 170. Here is the speed test on the two and a half inch SSD, about 562 for read and 518, 520 on write. So a considerable increase in speed over the three and a half inch drive. Now let's take a look at that M.2 drive and look at these results. So we've got read results of about 3,400 and write at about 2,700, which is just insane. You know, if you think about the increase an M.2 has over in a three and a half inch drive, and here's a quick comparison, it's just side by side on everything here. So we took the best result from each of the drives here, and you can see, you know, read, write 180, 170, up to 562, 520 for a two and a half inch drive, and then the M.2 just blazing speeds of about 3400, 2700. So this was, you know, the real reason why we did the upgrade. We were getting uh, just really slow speeds with a three and a traditional three and a half inch drive, and so glad that we picked the SSD drives, and very happy that we have the bootable drive, the M.2 drive, and the backup kind of storage drive is that two and a half inch SSD drive. Now I also recorded some of my boot times as well, and just real quickly I'll mention this it took an average with that three and a half inch hard drive I would see boot times for turning the PC on for me to be able to access internet and, and open files of about two minutes two and a half minutes to two minutes 45 seconds on average right now with the SSD drive and that M.2 drive I ran a couple of tests and I'm up and running in IE full desktop in about 35 or 40 seconds so just tremendous increase in speeds and boot time that will just make everything more productive and, and more efficient. So again, tremendous boot times, increases over those SSD drives, and as you can see here, just great enhanced overall read and write capabilities with those SSD drives. Okay, let's summarize real quickly what we did here in this video. So on the PC behind me, we took out an old three and a half inch hard drive, one that looks just like this, with all those moving parts and pieces that was loud, noisy, and slow and replace that hard drive with two new SSD drives. We also used a piece of software called Macrium Reflect to clone the old hard drive into one of the new SSD drives. Now we saw from those speed tests we performed just how fast those SSD drives are. The two and a half and the NVMe M.2 drive were so much faster than the old three and a half inch hard drive. So the top reasons why you would upgrade to SSD drives are speed, performance, and reliability. Now the whole process didn't take too long. Removing the old hard drives, cloning the old hard drives, using that piece of free software, Macrium Reflect, it was all pretty much a very easy process. And I highly recommend, if you have old three and a half inch hard drives, of replacing those and upgrading to new SSD drives. 
So before we go, please take a quick second and subscribe to our channel right now. Hit that bell icon too, so you get notified when we post new videos. So that's a wrap, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is John with Get PC Security. See you on the next video.